My name is Eileen Shendo. I'm Pueblo, so we're really small. <laughs> I'm from New Mexico, journeyed here with uh, fellow friends, um, sisters, uh, also representing um, some of the Pueblo nations that we represent and come from. My lineage is in particular to the sovereign nations of Jemez and Cochiti. I speak to you as a sovereign woman from these two nations, a dual citizen to the United States of America, and as a fellow human. I really hope that, as I've heard people talk about rushing, we are really gonna wait to be very intentional and patient. NEPA, as you've all explained it and know quite well, is not something that my fellow grandpas, uncles, ranchers, quality, quality specialists by nature, you know, they don't know it in and out. They don't know the intricacies. Many of us choose to speak my language, which is an oral language passed for many generations, never written because of the value we hold in things. And so when people say that we need to expedite the process, I come back and I remind you we need to begin the rightful process the due process that's long overdue for every citizen of this nation, but for my in particular people, which are indigenous people, have been too far left out. Companies come into our state and they have learned the intricacies of each 19 troubled governments that we have. They know they're particular and they know that there are some that are more advanced and left others at a wayside to truly be shepherd in the wrong way pinned against whether or not profit is gonna give them something that they've never even seen. If you know your history, you know Nixon regulated our area as a sacrifice zone. Who's not smart to know the intentions, right? We still live that. These are the homes to the code talkers and we talk about honoring our nation. They've died cancer. All of them, maybe two, five, a handful are left. Not even to see their own people thrive and yet they fought for all of us. We're honorable, but it doesn't mean we're not smart. I'm not a person that's meant to give a life of our legacy in three minutes, and neither were my people. What people call too slow and too uncivilized with the words, whatever we've been termed in all these generations, this was honor for all of us. They took hours to delegate and deliberate these issues because it impacted all of us. They didn't look at us by color. They didn't look at us by race. They didn't look at us by nations. Even at that, we were a human. So I speak for those that can't even, and that's our water. That's your water. That's the only thing we have as a legacy to humanity in this world. And so every scientist can tell you our government pumps tons of money into universities all the time. I'm a graduate of CU Boulder. Thank you for helping me be great at bringing great people together. And not because it wasn't that what the university taught me. It was what my grandpa taught me. And when I graduated from that university, I told him, thank you. I'm strong. I know what to do. And all I did was learn something out that you already taught me on the field, but in a different language. We all come from that humanity. Please be patient. You've done your service. You've learned your path. We saw what the rest of them did in our government. Don't let the rest of us down. We still have beliefs. We still have hope. I'm a gardener, I have three young boys. Amos Pablo alone has I don't even want to tell you my acreage, U.S. government sometimes, because we got a lot, and it's ours, and we have a right to it. But for any of these companies, any of these laws, anyone else, we, indigenous people, have a right first, and you've left us out all this time. And Coach T, my grandpa said, go speak, because when the reason, as Coach Chipa, we found out about Coach T Lake and the whole Coach T Central Park being was because my grandpa got asked to mine the new Lee Renner or to be developed airport. 
he had no clue. Our people would have never had a clue. And if it wasn't for someone who was up at Coach T Lake who cared about the environment like many of you do, color aside, race aside, you cared. And he stepped in and he helped our leaders find a way to pull out. We're stuck in a hundred year lease for that property, but we don't have an airport and whatever else they dreamed of in that tent. But that's what they do. Those are the tactics, United States government. They point out pieces of paper and they say it's just this much. You guys know the truth. It's our land. It's thousands of acres. It's our water. It's our babies. You've heard from Navajo women. They can't even have kids. The United States government they gave us things to sterilize our babies because why? We're powerful. But not for ourselves. Never for ourselves. For this world. And so I ask you, listen, you've overlooked all of us on one person. I'm the daughter of a senator, and we did that by the help of the people. We won that race by the people. And I just remind all of us, we have a bigger place in this. Please, don't expedite. Do it right. For the first time in this nation's history, do it right. We're ready. Each of you, all of us were prophesied, not for the white race, not for the black race, not for the brown race, any of that, for the human race. We're all meant to be where we're at, we're at. Thank you for my time. There's nothing much more I can say. You have it in your hands, but please do the right thing on behalf of these people, our people, us as a people. We only got that one lifeline and that's our water and we're selling it fast, fast. Thank you. Thank you.